Okay, welcome back. So in the previous video, we set up our IK hands uh, to match the locations of our FK hands. And now if we take a look at this, we can see that we definitely have very nicely matched up arms and wrists and hands and all that. So this is definitely the trade-off that we want. Now, here's what we're going to do in order to lift the box. The box itself is going to need to be um, picked up. And what I tend to do in this case is to create a separate box uh, for what when the box is on the ground versus when the box is actually being picked up. I, I usually do a little bit of a sleight of hand where I turn off the visibility of the first box and I turn on the visibility of the second box, for example. In order to do that, we have to know exactly where the box is going to be at the moment that it's picked up so that the second box's position precisely matches the first box's position. We do know that in this animation, it's where we see it at the moment. So what I can do here is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to call this box um, start and I'm going to duplicate it. We're going to call this box, the second one's just going to be called box lift. Now uh, box start, we can give a, a different material. So let's just um, select that and we'll choose assign uh, new material. We'll just assign it a blin and we'll make that blin red. So just red like that. Now these two boxes are sort of sitting on top of each other right now so we can't see the red and the blue simultaneously but one is red and one is blue. The red is the start one. So we actually want to have um, actually I think the red is the start one. Let's just make sure. Yes, the red is the start one. We want to have the red one on right from the beginning. So frame one, we're going to key its visibility on, which it already is, key selected. And at frame two, we're going to uh, also just set a key on that, key selected. And on frame three, we're going to turn it off. So we're just going to set that to off. All right now, if I just move this guy out of the way for a moment, we can actually see what's going on there. There it is visible on frame one and frame two, and on frame three, pop, it seems to disappear. All right, so let's just um, pop my other guy back in place there. And he's going to be the opposite. He's going to be at frame one. His visibility is going to be off. So I'll just key that. I'll also key it here on frame two. The reason why I do this is because um, if there is interpolation uh, across all the attributes, uh, the visibility attribute can be interpolated as well, which means that at a certain point, that zero to one off to on value may cross above 0.5, meaning that it might switch on earlier than when I want it to. So I always key it off just to make sure. So it's a hard key from uh, off to on or on to off just over the course of one frame. And uh, here at frame three, I'll turn it back on, key selected. So now what we see is frame one and two like that, frame three becomes blue. And that's just so that we can actually assure ourselves that what we're looking at here uh, are two different boxes, even though for the purposes of the animation, when somebody was watching it, they would really only ever see one. Okay, so um, on our um, box lift here, we're going to create a couple parent constraints. And those parent constraints are going to attach to the wrists. I guess we just have to kind of imagine that the hand is kind of come in here and is actually touching the box a little bit closer if we really wanted to make this believable, but we can leave that for uh, other uh, a concern on another day. So the first thing we want to do with a parent constraint is to select what is going to be the parent object, which is the box in this case. Then we want to shift select the child object, which will be one of the wrists. And we'll go to constrain, parent, and we'll go to the options. The default options, we just reset the setting, is fine. Click add. And now what we get when we do that is when I lift the box around, notice that the hand, the wrist control basically, comes along for the ride, which is great, which means that we're starting to animate based on the position of the box. Now what we're going to do is go in and uh, create a uh, control here on this wrist as well. So we'll click on the, um, on the box, and then we'll shift select the wrist, and we'll just repeat our previous command. So we're just going to go to constrain parent. All right, so now when we pick up the box, that just means that we end up uh, moving the box around with both hands. And uh, so this looks like the box is just being picked up uh, by both hands. 
And uh, in the next video, we're just going to take a look at how we can control this a little bit more um, so that we can uh, create some additional trade-offs like either putting the box down or maybe sort of jumping it up in our hands and catching it again. So I'll see you then.